uh, Wither got nerfed a little bit in terms of how it exactly works. People stopped playing him too much, and I feel like there's a pun here with Freak, with Nazis and Lemon Dogs, but you know, I'm, I'm let him get to that one. <laughs> well, they don't want the dog through, yeah. So Jace being banned out, continuing to be 100% banned so far in the European LCS, and will it be Twisted Fate to go alongside him, or will he be allowed through? I wouldn't be surprised to see him taken away because it's still a very common ban in Europe and North America. Even though after, or even this is after he was nerfed a little bit in terms of how his cooldown reduction works off his E, in terms of his ultimate has a longer cooldown earlier on. But we do see the Twisted Fate ban coming in, and immediately Kerp he pretty much goes for that Shen straight away because both uh, top laners yesterday played Shen. Absolutely, and Kerp, if you remember that three v one dive, yeah. he did still manage to turn it around on Evil Genius. He's managed to pick up the kill while they piled in towards him. So let's see what Zora Zero and Dexter are going to pull out. It's not going to be Malphite because it was banned out, which is what he used to qualify with. Although allegedly on the coach they were saying that's all he could play at the time. Yeah, we had a good laugh with that one. He's like, I could play Aurelia too, but you know, he's not that good right now. But we do have Nunu being taken, so if that Nami does get locked in, I wouldn't be surprised to see that Nunu in the jungle. Arne played it yesterday, and I have to say, I was quite surprised at how well he, he played it. Considering he wasn't even counter jungling that much, he, I think he took red buff away once, and that was it through the entirety of the game. But just his presence around the map was, was so spot on. And, and then of course the Nami, which we've seen in North America quite a bit, we've seen in Europe now quite a bit, even in Korea, where she's a really strong lane presence, and she also has an amazing disengage on you if you ever try to dive into them. That tidal wave um, really sets up fights, and also if you pick up a cannon to fall that in, you can uh, you know ride the wave into the enemy team and really set up a, a perfect team fight. And I'm interested to see what alternate pull out because if they go for the tactic they used yesterday against Evil Geniuses, they've banned Malphite out. I know for a fact, RNA has told me, it's the only champion that can actually counter it. Yep. And that's why when we saw Fnatic doing a fairly similar strategy, we saw Soaz and Lissandra in there, uh, we saw the Nunu as well, but we saw immediately the Peke picked up the Malphite because they practiced with alternate with that exact same strategy. They know the tactic very well and maybe we're going to see if it works, but instead it's going to be mm. Aaron A going for Hecarim, the first appearance in the European LCS this summer. Yeah, so we saw Herkimot played him uh, last uh, last split, and of course over in North America he's played quite a bit. A really strong champion because to me it's like a Malphite. Like you have an ultimate that can't be interrupted and gives you that free ability to get into the back line of a team. Um, the Lissandra, I would actually be curious to see if it does get picked up because we saw Nami actually counter, I believe it was for all Lord, uh, Actually, I think it was Soaz quite well in terms of, you know, you use your E to get into a fight, but he has that Aqua Prison down for you perfectly every time uh, you get in, so it knocks you up, but we'll see what they're going to go. And of course, the Varus, which, if you pair it in with this combo, it's not really bad. That ultimate really synergizes quite well. Well, Kennen's a champion we've seen very strong throughout Korea and the North American LCS over the last few days. Uh, has been very, very strong. So we'll see whether that's going to be a top laner or the mid lane. It could, of course, be Nuke Gook playing it, but I'm wondering if that's going to be Zoro Zero switching it up here. Well, the thing is, yeah, he can go top or mid lane. So we're not, you know, not 100% sure exactly where that could t uh, technically go. And I actually, I think I talked with RNA last night, and he was mentioning, you know, a Europe and North America, they see a Koreans pick up a champion like Kennen, and they're like, oh, he's ridiculously strong. I'm going to play him in, in whatever lane I can, and then, you know, win the game with it. But it's more about how you use him in a team fight. And right now, the composition that Lemon Dogs has is is pretty good. I mean, the Caitlyn doesn't really synergize too well with the team in terms of uh, you know any ultimate that can help out, but the whole Nunu ulti mixed in with the Nami ulti mixed in with the Nunu ulti can really set up a, a really strong fight. Could we be seeing Evelyn in the mid lane here for Pharrell and Lord? Let's see whether he's going to go with that one. He's going to switch it up. It's going to be Ariana. He's going to be playing with his balls as always. <laughs> Jerry on support fiddlesticks. Yes, he is. And we saw Fiddle 6 uh, used by uh, Darker yesterday from Gambit Gaming. Honestly, we, it wasn't bad. Like, we were, we were watching it, and it, we, it wasn't anything terrible in any way. He just kind of got shut down because of the jhana. Like, he kept getting uh, knocked up right when he tried to ult into a fight. But I'm really curious to see how well Jerry does use that. And not to mention, you have uh, three people for, for your BDS, for your ball delivery system with the Shen, with the Hecarim, and with the Fiddlesticks. So it's going to be pretty hard for Ferelnor to miss an ultimate just based on the fact that he's 3,000 ELO and he has really easy champions to get it in there. As you can see, we're keeping the players hyperventilating, keeping that strobe on them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not too sure what's flickering with the lights there, but there's something keeping them active. It is going to be Karth that's being locked in, so that surely means it will be a top lane at Kennen, or will they just switch it around? Will it be Karth that's in the top lane? We have no. seen it a few times with Skara definitely going in with those side lanes, but I would expect it to be uh, Nuke Duck on Karthus and Zoro Zero on the Kennen. Yeah, especially since Nuke Duck is still is, is sitting on the exhaust right now. So. Yeah. But the, the composition they have, like, that's actually a very scary lineup. Like, they're not extremely tanky, 
but Zonia's bypasses that. Like you don't need to get really tanky if you just go for that item. And if you have a Karthus, Kennen, Nunu, all sit on top of each other with their ultimates, uh, well obviously not Karthus, but is, uh, is e Z, that is really going to hurt. And, and how's Ultimate really going to counter that? And lucky for them, they have two really tanky champions. They have uh, really good AD damage out of Varus, and then of course the Orianna, which can pull them away or prevent them from getting in. Well, it is bright and early, ladies and gentlemen, so thank you very much for joining us. 10 a.m. here, I know it's, it's a very early start for you, DreamHackers. And uh, there's a couple of you, I can see there's a couple of you wrapped up in, in bed clothes still. It's, it's nice of you to actually get up for us, some of you. <laughs> we were walking in and we actually saw people sleeping on their keyboards. Oh, that's, that's pretty standard here. That's fairly standard. It's, it's the hygiene levels sort of <laughs> degrade as the event goes on a little bit. It's awesome. I, I love it. It's the first yeah, time you're this at is the first so. time for you. I mean, is this, is this the first actual LAN event you've been to? Yeah. Sadly enough, Because, yeah. you know, being American, there's not... I mean, how many big LANs are there in America? There's not really that many that I can remember that... I can remember a couple, like PDX LAN and like yeah. San Diego, but that's about it. But, yeah, it's my first one. And there's nothing compared to DreamHack in the oh, world, yeah. honestly. Uh, no, nothing that gets close to the size of this event. Of course, if you've seen the opening trailer that they've done yesterday from the first day, check it out because it's, it's great to see, you know, just... The overhead shots of all the gaming halls are pretty impressive. And one thing to me that's really cool is that the age, like ages of people here. Like you have some really young kids, you have some older kids, you have us who are, I think about in, in the middle there, maybe towards well, the you, upper side. I know, well, yeah, I'm glad you count us. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I'm I don't want to say anything guys, guys, but sure, but, It's uh, really cool to see all these people playing games, enjoying it, and, uh, and doing it together. Yeah, okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's the first game of 10 today. It is going to be alternate. As the blue team and Lemon Dogs as the red team. Everybody picking up those items early on, taking a little bit of time before they get going. And we'll see whether we do get any level one shenanigans. We don't often, honestly, it was actually only the two games that you and Joe did. We saw any level one fight. So two of uh, the seven games yesterday, nobody really went aggressive. We'll see whether they do in this one though. Yeah, the SKEG game, they, they fought, but they just backed away without getting hit at all. But, you know, looking at compositions, what we have at level one, you know, also, they have a strong composition in terms of scouting, uh, scouting things out. Um, they, they're not running a jungle shen, so they're not worried about Kurt maybe loading up that taunt right away. And then, of course, they also have the fear if they want to take that, or maybe the Crow Storm would actually be, or not the Crow Storm, the uh, Dark one would be better off of Jerry on his fiddlesticks. But, you know, Lemon Dogs, they have a lot of upfront damage, but, you know, the way the teams are setting up, I'm not going to really see anything. Oh, I'm not too sure you say that. And it looked like they were about to go in. We're looking at a crowd shot, though, as they were about to go in. They just decide not to show it. It'd be good to see the game on the screen, guys, because they did go aggressive, and instead they back away because they saw a ward. But it was good to see Jerry there for a lot of while. Yeah, handsome guy. <laughs> uh, but they actually, they forced Zero Zero to take his E, his lightning rush, so uh, obviously he won't be able to harass as well in lane, uh, depending on where he exactly goes, which at this rate, it, act, it, it might be middle. No, uh, it's always, there's always potential when you're on the red side to go uh, bot lane with a card that's if you take your blue buff right away, which with the way they're going, they, they might potentially want to do it, or they're just kind of scouting out. But of course, the double golems, which we are on patch 3.7, we're seeing on your screen, that will be gone next patch, which is going to be really interesting. Yeah, it's definitely going to change up the way, and honestly, maybe change the advantage that the blue side supposedly has. Yeah, you, you, like statistically, it's like 51 49 or something. It's so close, yeah, it's, it's really nothing between them. But uh, we do see, of course, it's going to be looking Zoro Zero taking down the wolves. It does mean we're going to have lane switches, you can tell. We do have the Caitlyn and Nami in the top lane, but they're going for a bit of a late invade here in towards the blue, so it'd be great to look at the other blue area. You can see Aranea and Kurt there. We will Failure and Dexter coming in. It's going to have him coming in, and he does manage to come in. Gets the smite down. Hit and run from Dexter. Oh, that's going to feel so bad for Aranea when he started at the blue, and we know how, like, how well Arne can control buffs here, but so perfectly well played out of Dexter, was forced to use that smite, but obviously he has consumed, he should be able to take his red and just pretty much get around the map and gank. And they both went for the smite as well, so it's simply a case of Arne not quite judging it right. You see he used his smite early on there, so instead, double smites both used, he's not going to have it available for the red just yet either, so that's really going to set him behind early on. Yeah, and if we could take a look at mid lane actually real quick, we see that Noob Duck did pick up his own blue right away off the bat, so he's going to be harassing Thrawn Lord quite well, but as we're looking at Zorozo in that bottom lane, 1v2 here, and Kennen, he has a tough time, but obviously that range is going to help out quite a bit, not to mention that cloth number 5 pods that he's running. Yeah, so that's going to cause a lot of problems. He still have this triple stack in the top lane as well. Zoro Zero, meanwhile, is getting pressured in the bottom, but Kerp has got to have a wave of people coming at him. Dexter, you can see double buffed up there. They're keeping the pressure on. I think they're going to go for that early rush turret. We did see it yesterday, actually, with Ulster versus Evil Geniuses. They took that top turret against Wicked on his rise very early on, 
and we do have Blood Bell already leveled up for Dexter, so it is a it is very possible. And right now, RNA is not the facility to help out, so this could be the first turret. Yeah, you can see that Kerb's already backed away from this one, doesn't really want a part of this fight, and instead they're just gonna farm out the wave in between. Dexter completely zoning him out there. And they're just going to keep him bullied well away from this turret. Actually, I, I like this play of Eleven Dogs because they realize, uh, you know, we talked about uh, them versus Evil Genesis yesterday where Kurt got the, the 1v3 and got the first blood uh, off of that. So they're really pressuring him quite heavily early on and they're trying to make him not a threat as the game's going to go on. And with the zoning power, he's going to be stuck at level 2 while his, you know, counterparts in the top lane are going to be level 3 at this point. Yeah, it's forced Aaron Air to come around. Kurt comes around and gets spotted by that ward and they're just completely zoning him out. So this is actually causing problems for both Kurt and Aaron Air right now. An alternate are definitely up against it, but they are putting a lot of pressure on this bottom turret. You can see it's already down to a third health. So Jerry and Creaton trying to relieve some of that pressure from the top lane. And you can see on your minimap right now that actually Kerb, he ditched the top lane and he wanted to go middle and go for a gank potentially here just because he knew, like, there's no way I'm going to get anything here. I might as well try to help out some other lanes. But uh, Nuke Duck smartly backs away and uh, it is completely fine. And also, they should be able to get the turret here on this next wave, if not the one after that. And so in the meantime, Lemon Dogs are just killing off all that farm. They're not even trying to take the turret yet, as you see them farming between the two turrets still on the top lane. Well, the creep wave's doing it for him. It's actually taking the turret down just as much as Zori Zero, but he's in trouble because it's going to be a three-man stack down the bottom. It is going to be RNA on him. Is there going to be enough damage coming out from him? That's going to be the turret going down. That's first blood from Kraton. So it's a turret and a kill for Alternate. You really got to give RNA a credit on that one, considering he got really denied early on, losing that blue buff, but then coming around bottom, picking up that, or helping pick up that first blood. They're going to pretty much cancel out in terms of turrets, so the whole top lane thing that just happened in terms of, you know, Nunu sticking around so long is actually going to hurt them out quite a bit in terms of levels. Well, we do know that Kerb has not been taking too much experience, of course, the fact that they did have to go for it, so there's the other turret falling as well, so both, it's a one for one turret, for another Lord actually getting caught by the wall of pain there, Kerb is going to be there to support him, to protect him away from Dexter, and he still doesn't want to back away from this one, so... Let's have a look across the map. Still very even, and that's just a turret apiece down the bottom. We do have the duo lane backing away, so we're going to see where they're going to stack in. But the problem is the dual lane of Lemon Dogs isn't backing away. Well, as I say that, they start doing that on the minimap, but they were being very aggressive on that second turret, and I was really curious if they were going to commit to keep, uh, keep pushing or not. And it looks like they're actually not going to go for a lane swap, though I would assume they will do that eventually, and Zoro Zero will get that 1v1 against an already crippled Kerp. Jerry's going to get spotted out by that. Ward in the river. Newt Duck wasn't falling for that one. His blue buff has worn off now. Of course, remember, he did go for that one early on. So we'll see whether also Lemon Dogs do go for that invade again. See whether they can try and get that steal on the blue buff. They're going to have the timer on it, of course. Jerry hanging around down bottom. He's like, oh, Lemon Dogs, they're maybe going to push straight for Dragon here. Yeah, I mean, I, I was actually looking at it and I was like, Alternate has kind of the advantage here because Kerb's going to be in the top lane split pushing and you already have the bottom turret down, but Lemon Dogs, they are going for Dragon here. They're staying on top of Pink Ward. But the members of Alter are kind of closed in here and they're going to try to stop this. Lemon Dog's all over the Dragon right now. Aaron Air is close by and you can see the Veer also coming out from Jay Ree. He really wants to get in for this one. Hail of Arrow lands right across and that's going to slow them. So they have two members of Lemon Dog stuck in there. They're going to go piling in for Dexter. They do manage to get the smites. Aaron Air gets in. There's the piercing arrow. Nuke Duck's also going to go down as well. So it's a three for two, zero here. Two for zero, sorry. Aaron Air back on towards We Will Fight. He's forced to flash. He's only gone into the Dragon Pit. He's completely pinned out here. Zoro Zero is going to be the target. They're going to try and get on towards him. Aaron Air taking down very low. And Jay Ree just draining him down. Can he do enough to get away from this one? Yes, he does. Pharrell Lordo taken very low by Tabs. One shot will finish him off. It's a two for one in the Dragon Pit. And that whole play by Alternate was just so well done in terms of getting in there, killing Dexter, and then stealing the Dragon away. And you gotta give Jerry credit on that fiddle six. The fear, the silences were so strong. And unluckily for uh, Lemon Dogs, Zoro Zero was not level six yet, so he didn't have that ultimate available. And in the meantime, Lemon Dog here is relatively healthy, but if no one gets there quick, they could probably get that. Zoro Zero also very low. He's backing away down the bottom though. Doesn't want to stick around. Three members of Alternate were down there. Dexter just covering off against Kerp, making sure he doesn't get it. But look at Kerp. He's already back to level five. So all of that zonal play they did has backfired a little bit by Lemon Dogs. They're a thousand gold behind because of that dragon going down. Tabs and We Will Failure trying to keep this pressure on this mid lane turret. But for Lord coming back in Ariana, it's a very good wave clear at Ariana. He's going to have no problems defending this turret off. And you can see it forces them to back off and buy. And he should be able to get his blue buff on top of this really soon since uh, obviously it is up right now. And that will help out the wave clear a little bit more. And, you know, you mentioned Kurt was in the top lane, now level 5. And it's kind of funny that Lemon Dogs, they applied all that pressure top lane, farming in between turrets. And yet because of that one fight, which was a 4v5 in the end in favor of Lemon Dogs, Kurt is now caught up in levels. And pretty much almost even in CS to his counterpart Zoro Zero. For the first time, Alternate do get their blue buff as well. 
We do see the AD carriers, the difference between them. Build Water cut the pickaxe as well. So obviously Infinity Edge being rushed by Tabs. Meanwhile, Blade the Rune King being pushed for Kraton. And the thing is, Kraton has three kills now under his belt because of that last fight. Um, and because the first fight he got earlier. Not to mention the Dragon money. So he's very far ahead at this point. And a Caitlyn, you know, we know Tabs is fantastic Caitlyn. He played it constantly during the promotion series. But he should be farther ahead than this, than his counterpart. And uh, you know, also, they're going to pretty much make them pay for that. The, the ultimates that they're going to use together in combo are going to really tear apart Lemon Dogs. Well, you can see, I mean, it's an 800 gold lead already he's got open, just coming up to nine minutes gone. So that's a pretty beefy lead between the two AD carries. The mid laners, of course, they've been fairly passive in their play because they've just been farming while the rest of the chaos happens around them on that map. We're also seeing Kirby stacking towards, maybe a Warmog's going to come out from him. We'll see whether which way he goes with that one. Tabs back in that mid lane, has to get out of the Shockwave, use the 90 caliber net to get out of that. Very well played. Yeah, very well played. And that's, that's just Tabs. I mean, he's an experienced mid laner. He's an experienced AD carry now. And Kirby's taking a little bit of damage from Zora Zero, but the thing is, like, the pressure he's going to apply throughout this game in terms of him being able to get around the map with his ultimate and the person you're going to have to send against him will most likely be Zero Zero. You need someone with a stun to get, stop getting into those fights. But it's just really going to hurt Lemon Dogs. They need to kind of answer this somewhat. And it looks like they might have it by, in terms of uh, just pushing middle here. Well, Zoro Zero, you can see again, you're going to have Iron Air coming back around the side of him on this top lane. They are going to try and pin him in this time around. He's going to manage to get the stun on towards Kerf. Is that going to be enough to slow him down? He uses the Lightning Surge. Also, oh comes my. out. Aaron Egg does manage to get him stunned down there. Zoro Zero has to use his move over him. Can to try and get out of this one. Flashes in towards the Tribush, but there is a ward there. He's going to get spotted out. We were failing with the wave. He is going to interrupt him, and he does get away. Very well played from Lemon Dogs. But now he's played from both teams as well. Because Aaron Egg, that ultimate to get ahead of Zoro Zero, and then the knockback with his E just kept him, there, uh, kept him there. But a fantastic flash, and then that Nami just engage out of We Will Failure was just phenomenal. That's the strength of both teams here and a great escape. You have to give it to Zoro Zero considering that RNA had red buff. And you know, it's, it's funny to say that these are two new teams, but they are playing so well, so well experienced here. Clearly they are very well practiced. And it's something that the new teams have done. They seem to have much more passion than the, the current teams that are in there. They've really worked themselves hard to get in towards this LCS and they want to make sure they make the most of it. Yeah, we talked about it last night with a couple of the players and it's in terms of like, you know, practice schedules where the new teams, they want to prove something and they practice like crazy over these past couple of weeks. And the other teams we might have saved might take it so seriously, but the Shockwave lands on, we will fail it. Shockwave does pull him in, but he's not putting the damage down because for Lord still really lacking in that ability power. Meanwhile, down the bottom, we're going to get a Crow Storm on towards Nuka. He gets exhausted, he gets dropped. Kraton picks up the kill there. He's going to get away from it. Requiem is available, but he's not going to bother using it because there's no chance of a kill. That support fiddlestick so frustrating to deal with. Just his base damage on that ultimate, which is why we've been seeing actually some tank fiddlesticks come out of North America. But Jay Re, I mean, he's playing his fiddlestick so perfectly right now, and he's only become more annoying as the game goes on. And Zero Zero, he's taking some good damage from Kurt, but I don't think he's too afraid really right now. Well, Kurt's got the stun on him at the moment, so he's waiting for that to drop down. But he's going to back away. Zoro Zero not really wanting to stand and bang with Kurt any longer. It does mean that Kurt's going to continue that free farm. And actually, you know, despite all the harassment, all the pressure they put on this top lane, he's actually now ahead of Zoro Zero in terms of CS. Yeah, and actually, I took a look at his items real quick, and I noticed he has a Honey Guys in boots. And it's obviously a really good build just to go for that penetration kind of thing on, on Kennen. But to me, he's going to need, like, a Zonius. Like, right now, his, or his you know, uh, Nuke Duck on Karthus in the mid lane. He's going for the Rod of Ages. He's always going to be building a little bit tanky, but the Zonius, you're going to need it because you know you're going to be focused down quite easily. They don't really need to go for Nuke Duck right away. Um, but we'll see how their team fights go because they still have a very strong com uh, uh, composition for these fights. Well, we'll see how it develops. There's the Chain Vest curve going towards that Sunfire Cape. That's fairly well expected. Standard split pushing Shen. Renlord, meanwhile, is keeping hold of this mid lane, keeping and zoned out. Nuke Duck. Now RNA is going to come around and help him out there. They're going to try and put some pressure on that turret. They're not going to get too close to it though, because the wave there from Nuke Duck is very strong. Okay, so ultimately right now, they're, they're trying to go for some turret pushing here, but they don't have their key ultimates up. Like, we're still missing Varus' ultimate, we're still missing Fiddlestick's ultimate, and of course, obviously on Lemon Dog's side, they have everything available, so they're playing a little bit cautious here. Um, Dragon should be coming up relatively soon, so they might want to go for that, uh, you know, well, since they stole the last one, they want to take it away yet again, but we might see that first big team fight really break out here with every member, because Kerp's still in the top lane, but this time he will, or he is level 7, so, or sorry, level 9, so he'll be able to get in this fight. Yeah, he's got Stand United available. He will come straight down if he needs to. Tam's just going to clear that bottom wave and shove it along, getting preparation for Lemon Dogs to push on towards it. Where is RNA going? He's going behind enemy lines. He's coming around the backside of Nuke Dogs as the Shockwave flashes out of it. 
Just at the right moment, the rest of the team were coming around to support them. They now know that that ultimate of Ariana is down, and that puts them in a bad position for this next team fight. Yeah, it was a smart play because they wanted to kill off Nuke Duck when they had a very easy chance to do it, when they had Lemon Dogs out of position. But still, just their, their presence is really uh, making Lemon Dogs back away in the end. And, and for Elfenlor, I think he's a little sad. He's like, come on, I just want to hit one ultimate here because people keep getting away from it, unfortunately. But, but while his dance happens, while he keeps going back and forward, Curse is taking that top turret down without any issues. That is going to be the bottom turret to go down. Tabs takes that one down. They're putting the pressure on the mid turret as well. Aaron is coming around. They're taking down this dragon right now. They're going to keep the pressure on the rest of alternate coming around. It's going to be a four on four fight because Duke Duke's not really in it. Aaron A does manage to get his ultimate down, but the wave comes out from Weaver Vega. He's really going to be the only target. There's going to be the absolute zero going off. Kerb comes around the side there. That's going to be Aaron A down, so they're going to have to drop him down, but Zoro Zero gets picked off without issues. Tabs taken very low. He's got nowhere to run here. Alternate are going to clap straight on towards him. They do manage to track him down with the ball. There's going to be the piercing arrow. Kerb comes in. It's a double go picked up for Pharrell Lord. And now Dexter, he's not going to be able to escape. The rest of his team, Nuke Duke just off the side with that wall of pain. But the hail of arrows lands on Dexter, slows him down just a little bit. The blood boil going to help him try and escape from this one. He may well just be able to get away. Can Creaton get close to get those hail of arrows? I think he's got away. And that is a two for one. Two alternate. A two for one again on top of Dragon. Obviously, it wasn't taken just yet, but alternate so well played. And imagine how differently the fight would have gone if Pharrell Lord's ultimate was up for that fight. It would have just been a slaughter for them. Uh, unfortunately, didn't really get that off, but they're going to get a turret. They got two kills, and they're looking very healthy. And the ultimate does land this on the the shockwave there, and he hadn't got the flash available from the last time it was used. Kerb's going to try and dance away from this one. He's going to have Shadow Dash available to get away, but instead they're going to try and turn it around. They're going on towards Dexter. One more shot would be enough, but now Pharrell or might be baited into this one. He's getting a lot of damage from Zara Zero on towards him. We will fail coming around. He's going to get caught out. He's getting too aggressive, but he's going to just swim away from that one. There's the ace in the hole coming out. Kurt manages to block it off. And while this is happening, Ultra was trying to go for a sneaky dragon here, but oh, and then they're gonna back it away and Jerry! Jerry's oh. gonna go down! Zoro Zero does manage to get the lightning surge on towards him. Neither team really in a position to fight for this one. Taps, maybe if he used that Piltover, would have caught another one. And they do manage to defend the turret after all that. So in the end, I believe, was a, <laughs> I believe in the end it was a three for two uh, with Ultra coming out ahead in that one. And they had to be a little bit careful there at the end. Nuke Duck was coming back up. He had his ultimate available, but it looks like they will be conceding away here, potentially Dragon, though. I'm looking at it right now, RNA, he does have his ultimate available in 20 seconds. But no, that's not going to last. It's, it's a new new. You're not going to stop Nunu from taking that dragon. No, they're going to have to give up on this one, but that just means Lemon Dogs are going to close the gap. They were behind in the goal. It's just a... 1500 gold lead here and both these teams are playing at a high caliber right now. Aaron A is going to try and take advantage and get around steal off that red buff. There's a big wave that Kerp is clearing in that top lane. That's going to keep him separate and look at the CS difference. He's starting to build quite heavily against Zoro Zero and you can see the gold difference is the same though right now because of course Zoro Zero did pick up two of those kills. Yeah, I mean we saw Cannon yesterday and you can do extreme damage with them if you're ahead early on, but he's being held back a little bit, you know, in terms of CS, in terms of how the fights are going. So, to me, he's going to play, I guess, a little bit more of a utility kind of, or, you know, kind of build where he'll just be try, uh, acting as a stun bot, and then Nuke Duck will sit in the middle of them and, and be the real damage dealer for the team. The Kerp, like, they oh! have to be very careful. He's got straight on towards Zoro Zero. The chain of corruption goes down. He's going to be out trying to get out of this one. No, Creaton takes him down. No problem. That single award paying dividends that Jerry put in that bush. Yeah, great job. And that's, that's a fiddlesticks. It's, it's as long as you're warning correctly, that fear, you're not going to be able to escape it and you have to kind of get Merc Treads against it. But right now I'm looking, who's going to get the Runic Bulwark on alternate? It looks like Arne will be picking it up eventually, but still in the meantime, you're seeing alternate be very aggressive. They're, they're pushing the bottom in together. Jerry and Cretan are, are holding hands, being buddies, sticking together, and it's working out really well right now. And for Ellen Lord and Arne are also pushing on towards that mid lane going to keep the pressure on there. They're going to try and rotate around towards Nuke Duck. He's just having to defend this bottom wave all on his own right now. Aaron and Pharrell Lord are both coming in. They have JV just off at that side and you can see the damage that Kraton's already put down on towards that turret. He's got a creep wave coming in towards him. They're going to keep the pressure on while this is still happening. Kerb still just off the side. He's got Stan United available if he needs to come in. But the Wall of Pain Nuke Duck is just going to clear that out with a Defile. Yeah, luckily for them, they were able to get their own blue on a Nuke Duck. So the Wave Clear is going to be very strong with them. And I'll say, they're still sticking around. They want to buy Kerb that time to go for the top turret. And Lemon Dogs, are they going to concede that top turret? Or are they going to go for a 5 on 4 engage here and hope that Kerb doesn't get, in, uh, get into the fight in time before they kill someone? Not the five-man defense from Lemon Dogs. They're going to have to either deal with that split push in Shen eventually because he's just going to keep on shoving that top wave, take down those turrets and keep the pressure on. That's, that's all Alternate want to do. They're quite happy to play this game and keep Lemon Dogs all in position at this bottom turret. 
They are. It looks like they're going to engage though. They go for Pharrell. Oh, he tries to flash out of the way. They stood on that one trap. Maybe that was enough to cause him out. Aaron Air comes in, tries to see if they can bait them, but they're not going to go for it. They're happy to keep the split push going. But that was a major ultimate down now for Lemon Dogs. If alternate once, they can engage on top of this turret because of that wave being down. Kerp still pushing the top end right now, and it looks like Lemon Dogs will start chasing here. They're going to keep on pushing them back, but that is the top turret down. Kerp is just going to keep on going in that top lane. Eventually, somebody will have to go towards that top lane to deal with them because Alternate are happy to play this dance all day long against Le Lemon Dogs here. And you can see just off the side, Aaron A is desperately wanting to get across. They tries to come in towards Weaver Fighter, catches him out. There's going to be Chain of Corruption. Shockwave comes in, and that is Lemon Dogs dropping like flies right now. Dexter's going to get taken down. Sorry, Zero gets dropped. That's four down so far. Duke Dog, the only man remaining. Jerry wanting to get straight in towards him, trying to get on towards him. Instead, they're going to go for the turret. Look at this. Kerb didn't even need to yeah. go. That was a 4v5. Kerb is still split pushing that top lane. And that is going to be another inner turret going down. They're going to keep the pressure on towards them. That was just ridiculous. That's the 3000 ELO shockwave we were talking about right there. Just catching them off guard. Arne coming in from the backside. So perfectly well done. And just like you said, Kerb, he's... You know, guys, I want to fight. Why didn't you tell me to go in or something? But still, applying that pressure and also they have a very healthy lead right now. Absolutely. Sunfire Cape doing its work in that top lane. They're finally going to come across. It's going to be Nuke Duck that tries to prevent Kerb, but he's happy. He's going to back away. He's built up a massive chunk of farm over Zero Zero while that was all happening. And frankly, Port Lemon Dogs, they're kind of a little bit short on strategy right now. Alternate are outplaying them across the map. Yeah, one thing I actually really like seeing right now is out of uh, Alternate's side is that They've really punished Weevil Failure quite a bit. If you look, he doesn't have any GP10, so all the words he's putting down are coming right, right out of his pocket, pretty much. He's not really getting that back too easily. And when you have a Fiddlesticks and a Hecarim, you have to be very careful. But you see a gank potentially going down middle. Tabs is just a little bit too quick. Just able to back away there. Um, but, you know, going back to what I was saying about wards, it's you have a Fiddlesticks, you have a Hecarim, you have to ward against that, but when you don't have that GP10, when you're forced to build, you know, a little bit tanky earlier on, you're going to have a tough time really defending against that, and that's how Ultra took advantage of that fight. As you can see from Lemon Dogs, because they were held in that sustainable fight in that bottom lane, they've just got no wards across the map at all, whereas Alternate at full vision now, like you say, in that top lane. Kirby. He's just got full coverage. He's going to be up that top lane all day long. Lemon Dogs are going to try and stack it towards this mid tower. They may be able to get on towards it, actually. But J Ree's in there. They're going to keep the pressure on. Are they going to have enough to take the turret down? Aaron A is going to try and do what he can. The ball is there. If they want to pull the shot wave, he gets all four members in this time around. J Ree comes around the side. But look at this coming from the river. It is going to be one more man. It's great on coming around. Manages to get that chain of corruption off. Hits on towards him. We will fail. It goes down. That's three dropping so far. And Lemon Dogs are going down once again they're having all manner of problems it's 15-5 in kills versus alternate and that was pretty much a 3v5 i mean kerp he ulted and gave the shield to rna but he went down right away and now kerp i mean he's just like hey guys i'm really tanky i can face tank this turret all day and they have jerry even chewing up a little bit but also just played phenomenally to be honest i think kerp's like hey guys i am in this team by the way yeah, do you want, do I want, want to help? fight because it's been 4v5 from alternate and they're quite happily taking it to the lemon dogs right now lemon dogs who honestly looked invincible yet they look so strong but alternate well they took eg down in easy fashion and now it's looking like they may well do the same to the dogs yeah it looks like and they're actually setting up for dragon on top of this so they don't even have you know a 10,000 gold lead almost they're going to try to pick that one up as well but baron you know it could be a potential for either team to go for it if if lemon dogs goes for it they're going to have to rush it down as quick as possible but they don't really have the damage for that and also they're going to pick up this dragon here and no one lemon dogs is in position and you know, this all comes back to, unfortunately, for We Will Failure, where he wasn't able to get, like, a GP10, and the ward coverage he's been putting down has been insufficient at this point, and Alta just taking advantage of every situation. Well, I mean, that's, that, like you say, that's exactly why Kraton caught them off the side there. Yeah. You know, and Ward ran aggressive. They were like, oh, we can fight this one. Oh, wait, there's a 717 AD carry coming up behind us that may actually rip us a new one. Perhaps <laughs> it's just happens to pick up that red buff. They're not too worried about the red buff control because they have full control across the map. And look at the items they are stacking in there now. Infinity Edge just completed by Kraton, along with that Blade of the Rune King competitor just. Oh, and a Giant Spell. Why not just get some hit points in there as well? Tabs, meanwhile, he's only got that Infinity Edge in the Zeal. But he luckily does, though. He has a Nunu on his team. So, I mean, that's going to make up for his damage that he's lacking, though. A Blade of the Rune King, when you already have the enemy team being very aggressive against you, he doesn't have to, you know, worry about walking away, he can attack whoever he wants. And then we even see the Runic Bulwark coming in being finished for Aranea. So 
they just have like the perfect item set up. They're ahead of items across the board, and it's pretty much their game to lose right now. And you, you say the Rooney Bulwark, well, it's completely for ultimate, but there's there's just no magic resist right now for Lemon Dogs. And that Ariana yep. ultimate, it's caught four of them twice in a row in those team fights. It's just shredded them. It, it's coming. <laughs> look at look at Dexter's It's items. coming. It's getting there. Yeah, but it's, it might not be even too late. Yeah, let alone it getting towards the Rooney Bulwark. He's a long way off now, and Dexter's been hindered. And you can see that he's actually fell two levels behind Aranea. Meanwhile, all that split pushing that Kerb's doing, he's got two levels over Zora and Zero. Level 14, highest in the game right now. Creaton and Tabs are still equal in levels, but for Relenord, now he's up to level 14 as well. He's two levels over Nugo. And look what they're doing. They're like, hey, Kerb, you know, you were top lane. We, we want some action there. And they center down bottom. They'll be going for a four man push here. They have all their ultimates available. And they know that they still have Flash on Zoro Zero and even Tabs right now, so they can go for an engage very easily. Dexter's out of position right now, and also, I'm not sure if they're going to go for a dive here or just kind of take the turret safely. I'm not too sure if they're even going to be able to try and fight for this one, Lemon Dogs. They're just going to back away from it. There's the ball just slowly put towards Nuke's face. Wall of Pain does land quite well. They may well be able to defend it for one more time. We will fail up. Thought about coming around the side. There's the shockwave. Nuke will take it very low already. Oh, Piercing oh, oh. arrow from long range by Creaton. Snipes him down. Wow, I thought Caitlyn was supposed to be the sniper here, dude. <laughs> Jeez, but created just phenomenal play right there. And it looks like he's about to take this turn. And Kurt still didn't get in the fight because he wasn't needed. Pushing bot lane. He's going to get actually some damage onto the inhibitor turret. And Alter just playing so well right now. Kerp is just completely free farming. He's on this inhibitor turret. No problems at all. The rest of Lemon Dogs are trying to keep them up. Hey, RNA is going to go in there. Remember, Shockwave is down. RNA took it very low. He goes across. That's going to roll with the Crowstorm. They haven't really caught on to Lemon Dogs too well here, though. Lemon Dogs might be able to turn this one around because that tower is doing damage. <laughs> RNA is taking very low. The turret might be able to get the kill. He doesn't quite. Sorry, Zero gets taken down. And once again, Morel Lord picks up kill after kill. Tab's taken low. He's going to come across. Piercing arrows there. One more shot. It's going to be the hail of arrows that come across and that is Lemon Dogs going down once again it's a four for two Kerp did manage to join the fight Nuke Duck is back available but that's an inhibitor turret down oh he might not be too safe here Demon he might not be too safe they're gonna go across Shadow Dash comes in and that is a dead Nuke Duck is he gonna try and pull the Requiem trigger it's already been used it doesn't matter it's gonna be the inhibitor going down I think he's trying to pull it again they're like come on they're so low right now I can't break it won't work but I mean we saw in that fight unfortunately just What's been happening with Lemon Dogs, what Alternate's been doing? If you notice, a Pierce Scenario came across We Will Failure in the middle of that fight, and he dropped from about 100% to like 25%, because he hasn't been able to buy anything except wards. And he's, he's been really pressured to do that to really defend against his team, and Alternate, they already had a big lead, but it's getting even wider here. And it's just, how can Lemon, uh, Lemon Dogs deal with it? This, this is a team, Alternate, right now, that has executed two different strategies perfectly. It's not like they've yeah, yeah, yeah. to get it. They managed to use a completely different strategy to take down Evil Geniuses, and they did it in style. They're well, doing the same against Lemon Dogs, who looked invincible yesterday. They are just destroying them with a split push that Fnatic have been famed for. They kind of actually even did two strategies here, where you saw Arne lose his blue buff right away, so it's like, what can I do to stop this? What can I do to counter this? Kerp, he got pressured out of lane really early on. I had to back away from his first turret about four minutes in, but they, they changed it up. They tweaked it around a little bit. They made plays off of it, and... Also, I mean, you might you might be able to say they're probably one of the, like one of the best teams right now in EU LCS with the way they've been showing. Absolutely, and it, as we mentioned, it shows that these teams that have put the work in, put the work ethics down to practice. The fact that Alternate have been going back and forward to their countries to do exams yes. while they're practicing for this shows how much they really wanted to get into this LCS and prove to the world that they are a strong team. Zoro Zero might get caught out in the walls here. He's going to have to flash across. He's not got it available though. He's going to get caught out. He could have flashed. He didn't go for it. Instead, he's just stuck around. That fear and silence, he could not oh, escape that Oh, the shockwave lands and the Chain of Corruption backs it up, Tabs gets caught out, Chain of Corruption still bouncing, we will fail a pin down this time. It's Varelo that picks up another one, and look at Nuke Duck, he's just kept in position by that fear from J. Ree, and there's no escape. This time around, Alternate are going to push on, they have everything in their control, Super Minions coming along the top wave, they're going to push through, they're surely going to take the game, and that's going to take Alternate to 2-0 to zero to join the leaders in the top of the league in the European LC. Yes. So well played. I mean, you have to give it to Alternate. They just played phenomenally the entirety of the game. It's not like Lemon Dogs played bad in any sense. Their strategy worked out really early on, but they weren't able to turn anything off of that, and also were able to take them out in all stops. Fantastic performance, and well, once again, for Ren Lord is allowed the Oriana ball, and that ball delivery system has worked perfect. <laughs> Some of those shockwaves were certainly capable of his 3,000 ELO yes. that he was stacked.